In this video, we're going to be going through the limitation of physical measurements, medium questions. A couple of these questions are a little bit above the level that we need for our WJC AS level physics paper. So don't panic if you don't understand all of them, just watch the video and use it as some revision. This is one of the questions that I would say is above what we need to know. You don't need to be able to read a micrometer screw gauge, but you still might find it interesting in class, we tend to use a digital one, so you don't need to use this, but I will put a video on the Teams to show you in a little bit more detail how you read this. So let's go through the scales first. On the top here, these go up in one millimetres. At the bottom, they're 0 0.5 millimetres. So what this is showing is 1, 2, 2.5. So along our barrel, it's called our barrel scale, we have 2.5 millimetres. Then at the side, we have what's called a thimble scale. And this goes up in fives. In some earlier printouts, this goes up from 50 to 65. Just change the numbers to go 5, 10, 15, 20. It makes much more sense. So if you've got an old printout, apologies. So this goes up 5, 10, 11, 12, 13. So that hits at 13. Each of these are not. 0.01 millimeters. So what this then is 13, so it's 0.13 millimeters. To find out what this is overall, we just add them together. So in total, we are going to get 2.63 millimeters. And it says to state the absolute uncertainty. The absolute uncertainty is just the resolution. So it would be plus or minus 0.01 millimeters. And the way we write that together, our final answer would be 2.63 plus or minus 0.01 millimetres. Some other exam boards ask you to use half of the resolution as its uncertainty, but the WJEC state to use the resolution if no other numbers are available. So that's why we're using 0.01 and not half of that number. Question 1B. So this is the sort of thing that could come up on your paper. So we've got 10 repeat readings of the diameter of a wire using a screw gauge, determine the mean. So first we're going to add them all up and divide it by 10. So you're going to add these all up. I'm just going to write it on here to save me writing out the numbers. Add, add, add. And then the whole thing, you're then going to divide it by 10 when you're done. So that's what you type into your calculator. So your answer is 1.22 millimetres. I've done that to three significant figures because that's what's in the question. I think when I typed in, I got 1.219. Then, because we've got a range of data, to do our uncertainty, we need to take the biggest one from the smallest one and divide it by two. So we're going to do 1.25, take away 1.19, divide it by two, and we get 0 0.03 millimetres. And then to make sure we get that final mark, so it's three marks, you have to write your answer correctly. So your answer is 1.22 plus or minus 0.03 millimetres. 1c is to determine the percentage uncertainty. So we take our absolute uncertainty, 0.03, we divide it by the mean that we calculated, and then we times it by 100 because it's a percentage, and we should get 2.46%. Again, I've rounded it to three significant figures, and we can also put a plus or minus in front of that. So it's our mean plus or minus 2.46%. Question 1D is asking us to calculate the cross-sectional area of the wire and its percentage uncertainty. So first thing that you should already know is to work out our area, we are going to use pi r squared. I do believe this is given to you, but by this point this should be in your head. That is the area of a circle. So to work out our r, we have the diameter from above, if you remember. So we've got our diameter from earlier, which was 1.22. It says after a percentage uncertainty, so I'm going to write down its percentage uncertainty as well. 1.22 plus 2.46%. So to work out our area, we're going to do pi. We haven't got the radius, we've got the diameter. So if you hopefully are aware that the radius is half the diameter. So we're going to take our diameter, divide it by two, and square that, that should give us the area of 1.17 millimeters squared. 
Then we've got to think about our percentage uncertainty. So what we do is every time we time something, we add together our percentages. So we've got 2.46 and it was the radius was squared. So we times it by something else just once. So we're going to end up doubling our percentage uncertainty because for one measurement of the diameter or the radius, we've got 2.46, but we did two measurements of the diameter. So we're going to do plus or minus five, oh, no, I can't double numbers, 4.92%. So that's how we write this one. We can put the unit here rather than the right-hand side because of the percentage. Make sure you don't forget to put the unit for the area. So question 2a is about a vernier caliper. Again, this is a little bit above what you need to know, but I'll put a video if you're interested. So on the top, we've got the main scale. So that goes up in 0.1 millimeter increments because we can see we've got a 15 and a 16 millimeter. And here we've got our 0.1s going up here. So first thing we've got to look at is where is the zero? So the zero is just above the 15. So from our main scale, we're going to get 15 millimeters. Our vernier scale is going to help us. How much above the 15 is it? So we can see it's not coming after the 15.1 or the 15.2. We are after that second decimal place. So each of these is 0.01. This is a place where I kind of disagree with the mark scheme. Okay, I don't think the picture has been done very well. And even the video I attach has a slight different rule. The important thing is what is the scale of this vernier scale? And the question doesn't tell us. So I've worked out it should be a 0.01 scale. Again, this doesn't actually come up in your AS levels. This is just in case you're interested. So to work out our more detail, we look for where do the lines meet? So if you look here, these two lines don't quite meet. These two don't, these two don't. But these two, I'll circle them now, meet perfectly. So we count up how far they go. One, two. So our vernier scale is 0.02. So to get our final answer, we add them together, 15.02. It's absolute uncertainty. Again, we are going to take the resolution, which is this, plus or minus 0.01 millimetres. Question 2b. So we're following on from the one above it there. It's taken after the wire extends. So again, different GCSE um, exam board here. It's given us the wrong resolution. We've just worked out it's 0.01 millimetres, plus or minus. So we are going to work out, first of all, the extension. So we're going to take our answer from before, 15.02, take away 14.9, and we get 0.12. And then we're going to give its absolute uncertainty, which is exactly the same. It's the resolution. 2C is talking about tensile strain. We'll come and learn a bit more about that later on. But the expression for strain is the change in length divided by the length. So here we've worked out it's 0.12 divided by 14.9, which is 8.05 times 10 to the negative 3 millimetres. That's the strain. Then we've got to calculate our percentage uncertainties. We've got two different values here, the change in length and the length, and it wants a percentage uncertainty. So we're going to work out the percentage uncertainty of both. So for our change in length uncertainty, we've got 0.01 divided by the length of the wire, 0.12 times 100, which is equal to 8.33%. And then our length instead, it's because we're dividing it by the length, we're going to use our same uncertainty, 0.1, because that is how accurate our device was, and divided by the length, 14.9. And don't forget to times by 100. And I got 0.067. One percent, and then we add them together because we we are dividing two numbers here, so we add their uncertainties. So your total percentage uncertainty is eight point four oh percent, and I've rounded that up to make it three significant figures. So your final answer would be eight point oh five times ten to the negative three plus or minus eight point four oh. 2D suggests one way to improve the experiment to make the value of the wire extension more accurate. 
So I've just written those in for you now. We could do what we did in class, which was to use a digital scale instead, or, or you could maybe even do both, repeat the measurements and then calculate the mean when you're done. Question 3a, the student participates in an experiment to measure the Earth's gravitational field strength. We will actually do that practical a little bit later in the course, and we do that using a simple pendulum. And here is the equation suggested. They measure it 10 times. Define the mean and its percentage of uncertainty. So you should be experts at that by now. We're going to add them all together and divide them by the number of data points. So we've got 10 data points. So what you should hopefully get is 0.67 seconds. And then to work out our uncertainty, we're not going to use the resolution because we've got an average here. We've got multiple data points. So we're going to do plus or minus half of the range. So let's calculate our range quickly. We're going to do the biggest number, take away the smallest number. So 0.69 is our biggest. And we're going to take away 0.64, divide it all by 2. And we should get 0.025. So that is half of our range. I've just realized I've done the range divided by two there, not just the range. Um, so that is our uncertainty, but it does say percentage uncertainty. So I'm going to leave it more space and I'm going to do our uncertainty divided by 0.67 times 100 because it's a percentage. So what you should hopefully get is 3.73%. So our final answer would be 0.67 seconds, because we need to put our unit in, plus or minus 3.73%. Question 3b, state one way they can reduce the uncertainty, so they could measure it over more oscillations. It doesn't really state in the question, but it implies that they only measured one time period. What you could do is measure 10 and divide it by 10, and that reduces the uncertainty there. The student estimates the uncertainty on L to be plus or minus 50 millimetres. Hence, or otherwise, use your answer from part A, that's important, to determine the percentage uncertainty in the value of G. So we've got an uncertainty for our length and we've got an uncertainty from part A and we need to work out our total uncertainty. So we're probably going to be adding percentage uncertainties. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our equation from the previous page, which was T equals 2 pi square root of L over G and we're going to rearrange that just for gravity so I'm sure you can do it I'm not going to go through it step by step if you can't do it you need to let me know and we'll practice it in class so if we rearrange that we get 4 pi squared L divided by T squared then we're going to go through the uncertainties so there is no uncertainty for a constant so we don't need to worry about an uncertainty for 4 same with this pi squared, that's a constant. And by constant, I mean it's it's a number that's stated. Okay, pi is always going to be 3.14. But the other two are our measurements. So there is going to be an uncertainty for L, and there's going to be an uncertainty for T. And you can see the T is squared as well. So there's kind of going to be two uncertainties for that. We're going to need to add them together. So let's work out the percentage uncertainty for L, first of all. That's our new one. So we've got 15 there, 15 millimetres. So it's 15 millimetres. And I'm having a look at the previous page to work out what is our measurement for the length. And it is 11.2 centimetres. So you can probably spot millimetres and centimetres are different. So let's just convert them into centimetres. Now it doesn't actually matter which way we convert them as long as they're the same. So we're going to do 1.5 divided by 11.2 and then don't forget, we've got to times it by 100. So our percentage uncertainty for L is going to give us roughly 13.4%. So that's one percentage uncertainty. We also have already worked out the percentage uncertainty for T. We worked it out earlier. It was 3.73%. Now we've got to work out the total percentage uncertainty. So we're going to do 13.4 for our length plus the one for our T, which I think was tension. And because it's t squared, we times it by itself, we're timesing it by another one, we're going to add them all together. So you're going to add all these numbers together and you should get roughly 20.9%. That is our total percentage uncertainty. We now need to work out the value and absolute uncertainty in G with all the numbers we've got. So we've got that equation for G that we worked out above. G is equal to 4 pi squared L 
divided by t squared. Our value for L is 11.2 times 10 to the minus 2. That's me converting it into metres for ease. And then underneath our measure for tension, not tension, I'm lying, is the time period. It is 0.67. So the reason I converted our length into metres is because that is an absolute unit. Again, we'll do, we'll do a lesson on that if we haven't done already. But if in doubt, convert things into metres because our metres and our seconds are both perfect units and it means our answer will be correct. So you're going to type this into your calculator, 4 pi squared times L divided by 0 0.67 squared. Don't forget that T is squared. And you should end up with overall 9.8 metres per second squared, which if you know the value for gravity or acceleration, it is 9.8 metres per second squared. If you're a little bit unsure on where I got that unit, make sure you practice going through your absolute units and homogeneity questions. We might not have got to it yet in class, but we will. And then we've got to work out our absolute uncertainty. So we've got our percentage from the previous question, which was 20.9. And we're going to do 20.9%. So that means we've got to divide it by 100 times by 9.8. And that's going to equal plus or minus 2.0. So the way you tend to write that with the unit, 9.8 plus or minus 2.0 meters per second squared. Question 4a, rearrange according to decreasing percentage uncertainty. So that does mean we're going to have to work out the percentage uncertainty of all of them. So the first one, we do 0 0.2 divided by 4.1 times 100. I'll write it underneath so we've got a space, 4.88. The next one, 5 plus or minus 1 milliamp. Because the unit applies to the percentage uncertainty as well, we don't need to worry about the fact they are in different units. So we're going to do 1 divided by 5 times 100. So we're going to get 20%. You might even be able to do that maths in your head. This next one, I'm running out of space, 0 0.23 divided by 7.3 times 100, you're going to get 3.15%. And then our final one, I'll do down here, 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.5 times 100, we're going to get 10%. So all that's left to do is put them in order according to decreasing percentage uncertainty. That means we'll start with our biggest ones. This would be our first one, because that's our biggest. This would be our second one, then our third one, and our smallest is this one here. Question 4b, we're talking about a circuit that is set up to measure the resistance R of a resistor, the potential difference, the voltage, and the current are measured, and the readings are shown. So down the side, we've got the current, and across the bottom, we've got the voltage. So explain how it shows the readings are subject to two different errors, systematic uncertainty and random uncertainties. So our systematic is the fact that it doesn't go through zero. So what we would expect on a current voltage graph like this is when there's zero voltage, there to be zero current, but there isn't. So that's a systematic error. So that means our ammeter should, wasn't at zero when it should have been. So there's a zero error. And the random error is shown by the fact they're scattered, like this one here, around the line of best fit. They're not perfectly on it. 4C, state a way to how it could have occurred and how it can be fixed. So we've got a zero error from our ammeter and the only way we can fix it would be to check our equipment and to repeat the experiment. If we keep going with this experiment, we can't get rid of that zero error because our equipment is not correct. 4D, in another experiment, we're gonna calculate the resistance of the resistor. Here's our current, here's our potential difference and we've got two different uncertainties. Calculate the value of R with its percentage uncertainties and give it to an appropriate number of significant figures. So we're just gonna start by writing the equation. It might be in your heads by now. V equals IR, sometimes you might have learnt it, I equals V over R. Voltage equals current times resistance. This is from our circuits unit that you'd have done in year 10. So we're trying to work out R, so let's just rearrange that. You can use a formula triangle if you like. So we've got I, R and V. So R is equal to V divided by I. So we'll work that out first before we even worry about our uncertainties. We've got our voltage or potential difference of 6.5 and we're going to divide it by 
and for that we get 8.8. I've done it to two significant figures because that is what the question is and it's in ohms because that's how we measure resistance. Then we've got to work out a percentage uncertainty. So we're going to work out the percentage uncertainty for each and then we'll add them together. So let's do our voltage first because that was on top. Our voltage percentage uncertainty 0.2 divided by 6.5 times 100. That was 3.07%. And then we've got our percentage as well for our current. So we're going to do 0.01 divided by 0.74. And that equals 1 point oh, times 100, don't forget that. 1.351. And then we're going to add them together. So we're going to add this one and this one together. So what you'll get is plus or minus 4.4%. Again, we're rounding it to two significant figures because that is what's in the question. And we can leave our unit here because it's a percentage uncertainty. If it was an absolute, we'd move our unit to the end. Question 5a. The student has a diffraction grating marked 2.9 times 10 to the 3 lines per metre. Calculate the percentage uncertainty. So we'll start with the absolute. So it says suggested by this marking. So we can see 2.9. So that's suggesting it is accurate to 0 0.1, but 0 0.1 times 10 to the 3 lines per meter. That's our unit there. To work out our percentage, it's really easy. You should be giving, becoming experts at it by now. 0 0.1 divided by 2.9. Doesn't matter about that times 10 to the 3. We could put it in, but it would cancel out anyway. Times 100 is equal to 3.4%. So that's to two significant figures. 5b, determine the grating spacing and then it's absolute uncertainty in millimetres. So again, this is where this is going a little bit off topic. We don't need to know the equation for grating spacing yet, but grating spacing equals 1 divided by n and n is the number of lines per metre. So it's a 2.9 times 10 to the 3 lines per metre above. So we're going to put in 1 divided by 2.9 times 10 to the 3. So our grating spacing is 3.448 times 10 to the negative 4. And that is in metres because our original one was in metres. If we want to put into millimetres or centimetres or something sensible, if you use the ENG button, it looks like this on your calculator, it will group it into times 10 to the 3 or times 10 to the 6. And this one, it should group into times 10 to the 3. So what that actually equals is 0.34 millimetres. And if you're unsure about your prefixes like millimetres, um, micrometres, etc., that should be on an equation sheet somewhere for you to double check. Then we've got to calculate its absolute uncertainty. So that's the grating spacing. That's part one. We've done that bit. And then we've got to work out its absolute uncertainty. So to do that, we're going to take our percentage uncertainty that we just calculated, 3.4. So that's the percentage. And then we're going to times it by this number here, 0.34. The reason that we can use that percentage uncertainty is we're just doing one divided by that percentage uncertainty. So we don't need to add it to anything else. And when you type that into your calculator, you will get roughly 0.012 millimetres. So the way we write this, 0.34 plus or minus 0.012 millimetres with our unit at the end. On to our final page. Well done if you've gotten this far. This is, these are quite challenging questions. So 5C, we've got another diffraction grating with a scale given below. So if you were to count these, there are 12 spaces. And that goes from, we're going to read this very carefully, uh, 13.5 take away 1. That's our range. So we've got 12 spaces across 12.5 millimetres. So to work out our spacing, so we haven't done grading spacings yet, so this might be a little bit confusing. We're going to do 12.5 divided by 12, 1.04 millimetres. That's the first thing we've got to work out is the grating spacing. Then we've got our absolute uncertainty and our percentage uncertainty. So our absolute uncertainty is going to be 
our resolution as before. So that would be plus or minus 0.1 millimeters. And then to work out our percentage uncertainty, you're going to do 0.1 divided by 1.04 times 100, which is equal to 9.6%. So that is our percentage uncertainty. And our final step is to calculate the number of lines per meter. So that's using this equation again. We are just going to do 1 divided by 1.04 times 10 to the negative 3, which was our answer from before. It's in millimeters. That's where that times 10 to the negative 3 came from. And you are going to get 962. I've rounded lines per meter. So well done if you got this far by yourself. Do not panic, as I've said before, if you've not got this far by yourself. Some of this you do not need to know for your AS level paper. It just might interest you. It's just the uncertainties we're focusing on rather than the way of reading the calipers and different measuring equipment.